In this video we are going to talk about 10 rules of investing you must follow to become rich. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. It is often possible to break down the process of investing into a few simple guidelines that investors may follow in order to be successful. However, success can be as much about knowing what to do as it is about knowing what not to do. On top of that, our emotions throw a monkey wrench into the entire process as well. While everyone understands the importance of buying low and selling high, our disposition frequently causes us to sell low and buy high instead. As a result, it is critical to building a set of golden rules that will lead you through difficult situations. When the market is increasing, anyone can profit from the situation. Investors that survive and thrive in a stormy market, on the other hand, are those who have a long-term strategy that is effective. In order to be more successful and hopefully wealthy as an investor, you should adhere to the following 10 golden laws of investing. Number 10. Set yourself goals. Knowing what your financial objectives are and what kind of time frame you intend to invest throughout may assist you in sticking to your investment strategy. In the case of long-term objectives, such as saving for retirement, which may be many decades away, you may be less motivated to withdraw money from your investments before you retire. Number 9. The bigger the potential returns, the higher the level of risk. Even though the potential of bigger returns may be enticing, there is typically a greater danger of losing your money when investing. Prepare yourself for the possibility of failure by considering the following, even if the profits on your investments are likely to be lower, you may feel more secure choosing less hazardous options. Keep in mind however, that no investment is without danger, and there is always the possibility that you will receive less money than you first invested. Over the long term, stocks have the potential to generate a larger return than bonds, but they also carry a higher level of risk. Bond investors are referred to as creditors. Bond investors are legally entitled to predetermined amounts of interest and principal payments, and they are repaid first in the event that the company goes out of business. If the company is successful, you will earn more than the fixed amounts of interest and principal, but you will not earn more than that. Shareholders are considered to be owners. If your firm fails, you could lose everything you have invested in it as a shareholder. However, if the company is successful, you may enjoy bigger dividends and a rise in the value of your stock. A number of investments, such as those sold on the exempt market, are highly speculative and therefore extremely dangerous to make. They should only be purchased by investors who are confident in their ability to lose the entire amount of money they have invested. Number 8. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. We've all heard the expression don't put all your eggs in one basket, but when it comes to investing, it's especially crucial to follow this guideline. Spreading your money across a variety of various sorts of assets in geographical places ensures that you are not overly reliant on any one type of investment or geographic area in particular. That means that if one of your investments underperforms, it is possible that some of your other investments will make up for the losses, however there are no assurances of this. Maintaining diversification in your portfolio is critical for risk reduction. Owning only one or two stocks in your portfolio is risky, no matter how well they have performed for you in recent years. As a result, experts recommend distributing your investments throughout a broad portfolio. Number 7. Invest for the long term. When it comes to investing, it should never be regarded a get-rich-quick strategy. You must commit to your investments for at least five years, and preferably much longer, in order for them to have the best chance of producing the returns you expect. And even then, you must be comfortable with the possibility of receiving less than you put into the venture. In the case of short-term investment goals, such as those that are two or three years away, investing will not be a good fit for you because you'll need to have your money readily accessible, which is typically done through a savings account. Number 6. If it seems too good to be true, it usually will be. Keep an eye out for highly speculative investments that appear to be too good to be true, and don't just invest because everyone else is doing so. When Bitcoin's price skyrocketed in the latter part of 2017, many investors flocked into the digital currency, only to see its value have in the span of less than a month, according to Bloomberg. Bitcoin was trading at about $20,000 in mid-December 2017, 
but it had fallen to below $10,000 by the middle of January 2018. Number 5. Never put your money into something you don't understand. Before you put your money into any investment, take the time to thoroughly investigate it so that you understand exactly what is involved and what risks you are taking a chance on. In the case of mutual funds, for example, an important investor information document, KIID, or a key information document, KID, is issued, which describes the fund's key characteristics and charges. You must read this before making a financial investment. In the case of individual firms, be sure you understand what the company does and how it intends to make money in the future before making a decision. Number 4. Factor in Charges. Your overall results will be affected by charges, therefore it is critical to consider them while making investing decisions. For example, if you are purchasing funds, the ongoing charges figure, OCF, is detailed on the KIID slash KID and provides the most accurate representation of your real expenditures. This amount covers the fund's annual management charge, as well as the other major ongoing costs that were withdrawn from the fund the previous year and are included in the annual management charge. When you issue a buy instruction, we will also provide to you other fund charges that are not included in the OCF because they are incurred by the fund management. In order to maximize your profit, you should carefully analyze these fees. For example, if a fund returns 4% and the OCF and other charges have previously totaled 2%, your profit would have decreased to 2%. Number 3. Reinvesting income can help boost overall returns. If you don't require income from your assets, you may want to consider reinvesting it to purchase additional shares of your investment, which will potentially increase in value and increase your overall return on your investment. In layman's words, your returns generate additional returns, a process known as compounding. Please keep in mind, however, that reinvesting your money rather than accepting it as cash increases the likelihood of losing it or seeing its value decrease. If any income you receive is automatically reinvested, for example, if you invest in shares directly and have signed up for automatic dividend reinvestment ADR, you will not be able to choose the price at which you will purchase any additional shares, which could be either low or high depending on your investment strategy and risk tolerance. Number 2. Don't try to time the market. In an ideal world, you'd be able to acquire investments just as they were about to gain in value and sell them just as they were about to decline in value. However, because no one can foresee which way the stock market will move next, attempting to predict market ups and downs may result in you making a purchase or a sale at the wrong time. The practice of purchasing and holding investments might help you stay committed to your investments over the long term, eliminating the need to make snap judgments when the market is unpredictable. Number 1. Review your portfolio. Although playing with your investments in excess is generally not a good idea, this does not imply that you should completely disregard them altogether. Due to the fact that your investments will fluctuate in value over time, it is possible that your asset allocation the way you decide to divide your money across different assets such as stocks or bonds, cash or property, will no longer be in accordance with your investing objectives. As a result, you may need to rebalance your portfolio from time to time to ensure that you are still on pace to accomplish your financial objectives. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.